praise and to give you glory. We thank you for the privilege that you have given us to be in your presence. For blessed is the one you choose and cause to approach you that you may fill him with the goodness of your house. Therefore, this morning, fill us again by your word. Let everyone depart here with a change of story. You have called it a covenant day of open doors. Let every closed door be open today. We give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please, you may be seated in his presence. It is my year of breaking limits. Our series of teachings in our Sunday services has been unveiling our break, breaking limit heritage in the world. Unveiling our breaking limit heritage in the world. The scripture makes it clear to us that God's word is a mirror. In the book of 2 Corinthians 3.18, the Bible says that we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, it is in God's word that we get the actual picture of who we are in Christ. In the book of Ephesians 1 verse 17 and 18, Paul the Apostle paints it this way by the Holy Ghost. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He said the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. For what? That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. There is something God has packaged inside you. And God's word is what gives us access to see it unveiled. Don't forget, according to scriptures, the secret things belong unto God. But the things that he has revealed, they belong to us and our children after us. In other words, the revelation that a man encounters determines the revolution that that man experiences. If you can encounter the revelation of God's word on any subject of scriptures, it provokes a supernatural revolution in that department of your life. And that is why it becomes important for us to begin to capture the accurate picture of who we are in Christ, the description of God concerning you. Because until you see it, you can't live it. It is what you see that determines what you live. In the book of Genesis chapter 13, from verse 14 to 15, God speaking to Abraham said, he said, lift up your eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. As far as your eye can see, it will be given unto you. And God's servant, our Father, has made us to understand that you talk about north, you are talking about Genesis. You are talking about south, you are talking about Malachi. You talk about east, you are talking about Matthew. You talk about the west, you are talking about Revelation. Why? God rises from the north. Genesis is where we find the encounter with God. And we see its, you know, the, 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 the son of righteousness kicking off from the east where the sun rises in Matthew. So, north, south, east, west, Genesis, Malachi, Matthew, Revelation. That is the entirety of the scripture. Whatever you see determines how you will live. That is why it becomes important for you and I to position ourselves to have the accurate picture concerning our redemptive rights. In Acts 20 and verse 32, the Bible says to us, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So there is an inheritance, there is a package of redemption made available for everyone that is a child of God, but it must be seen first. When you see it, you seize it. When you seize it, you live it. My prayer this morning is that the eyes of our understanding will be open afresh. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. I said I pray again that the eyes of our understanding will be open afresh today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what does God's word show us concerning ourselves in Christ? 
we are going to look at four very important depictions in scriptures. And I believe that for each one of us, as we see it, we'll begin to walk into the reality of it in the name of Jesus. Number one, you are redeemed a star, not a failure. You are redeemed a star, not a failure. In the book of Revelations 22 verse 16, we find this statement made by Jesus. He said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. I am the bright and morning star. And in John chapter 17, verse 18, we are told, he said, as the Father sent me, Jesus speaking, he says, so send I you. If Jesus came as a star, then you and I are ordained as stars on the earth. And I pray that for each one, our star will rise in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah 60, beginning from verse 1, the Bible says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. He said in verse 3, he said, the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. That is God is saying that there are stars that will be rising in Zion. If somebody, one of them shout aloud, amen. amen. That is God's ordination. He has ordained for everyone that is a child of God to rise after the order of Christ. Jesus shows us from scriptures. He said, I am the bright and the morning star. And if I am the bright and the morning star, then you are ordained to shine bright as stars on the earth. That is God's expectation. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 2, beginning from verse 10, we have this picture painted to us in scriptures concerning our connection with Christ. Hebrews 2 and verse 10. It tells us there very clearly. Hebrews 2 and verse 10. We are made to understand, he said, that it became him for whom, all, for whom are all things, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. And verse 11, it tells us there, it says, For both he that sanctified, that's Jesus, and they who are sanctified are all of one. They have the same root, they have the same expression. They are all of one. They are ordained to shine. They are ordained to be just like he was just like he is he is the bright and morning star you are not permitted to be covered you are ordained to shine to your generation and i pray that for each one of us the star in you will shine to your generation somebody believe it say louder amen. amen but like we said you must first see it he said in that second corinthians 3 18 he said we all with open face we behold him as in a glass the glory of the lord and we are changed into the same image we start looking like him we start moving into higher dimensions like him he said from glory to glory as by the spirit of the lord in other words when the revelation of your stardom becomes real to you when you see it beyond any shadow of a doubt, then you begin to express it in your life and your daily walk. That's what God expects us to see. All you need to do, therefore, is just locate what it takes for that star to rise. And among other things we are told, in Daniel 12 verse 3, he said, They that are wise, they will shine as the, as the firmament. And those that turn many to righteousness as the stars of heaven forever and ever. So our stardom is tied to our engagement. When we see our picture and we commit to the process, you end up with the product. My prayer is that for each one here today, the star in you will begin to rise in this season. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. I said the star in you will begin to rise in this season. You believe me, say louder, amen. The star in you will begin to rise in this season. So you are redeemed a star. You must delete every picture of failure from your mind. You are not permitted to be a mediocre. 
You are not permitted to be relegated to the back. No. You are ordained as a star to shine upon the earth. And my prayer is that for each one of us, that will become a reality in our lives in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number two, you are redeemed to be far above principalities and powers. You are redeemed to be far above. The Bible makes us understand in Ephesians 2 verse 6, it says there, and he has seated us, raised us up together, made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where is that? Ephesians 1, 20 and verse 21 says, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. Far above all principality and power. There is nothing left. He said all, all, all principalities, all power, all might, all dominion. Far above. We are ordained to be above only, not beneath. That is the ordination of redemption. If any man is in Christ, he is ordained to be far above. That means you are not permitted to be tormented by the enemy. You are not permitted to be dominated by evil. You are ordained by God to operate in realms of dominion. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means there is no calculation they want to use he said nothing shall by any means hurt you so by redemption we are ordained by god to be far above that is our position we are seated in heavenly places and what does the bible say about the one that is in heavenly places the Bible says in Psalm chapter 2 and verse 4, it said, He that seated in heaven shall laugh. It said, The Lord will have him in derision. He that seated in heaven shall laugh. When the enemy is raging, the believer, why? Because he's seated far above, far above, far above. All principality, all power, all might, all dominion, far above them. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Can you imagine standing in the way and then you have just this little ant saying he's angry with you and begins to come towards you, charging with anger? Will you be afraid or will you be laughing? You'll be laughing. Look at this little ant. You angry with me? Keep coming. Keep coming. Just a little closer. Just a little closer. Why? Because you are going to stomp it under your feet. That's what you do with evil when you know where you are positioned. When you see that you are far above, when they begin to rage, that book of Psalms said, why do the hidden rage? Why do they imagine vain things against the Lord? He said, he that sitteth in heaven, he shall laugh. The Lord will have them in derision. He will bring them into confusion. That will become your experience in the name of Jesus. I said that will become your experience in the name of Jesus. So when you begin to see the reality of who you are and where you are positioned, when the picture becomes real to you, you find yourself operating in unquestionable dominion. We have heard the testimony of our father many times how that he has shared how that a number of years ago he was tested by the doctor and doctor said you have high blood pressure he said not me he said look at it he said not necessary i didn't say i don't have it i said i cannot have it why far above all principality including the one behind sickness and diseases far above far above far above when you begin to see this, there is no statement of a man that will intimidate you. There is no verdict of expertise that will begin to shake your heart. When your heart shakes because the doctor has spoken, it is because you don't know the authority of God's word. People go into hospitals and doctor speaks. And they come out not because of a symptom i discovered the hospital room the consulting room is one of the big, biggest converting rooms somebody enters the place is just fine he's greeting everybody as he's entering 
and when it comes out, it's moving gently. Not because they gave him injection, but because they told him something. And what they told him, he has embraced it wholeheartedly on the basis of the expertise of a man that was born just like him. Now hear this, and hear it very well. No man manufactured another man. Therefore, no man can tell the other one when his end will come. Is somebody getting what God is saying? Don't let any doctor intimidate you with his expertise. Yes, he went to school to get a certificate. But here it is, science is an accumulation of probabilities. They are simply gathering the history of many cases. But God said your own case is different. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. You must come to the point of understanding concerning your true positioning in Christ. I'm far above all principalities. I'm far above all power. I'm far above all might, all dominion, and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So don't allow anything intimidate you. Is somebody getting what God is saying? Walk in practical dominion, realizing your position in Christ. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Don't join them to say, hey, coronavirus is going everywhere. Far above. It doesn't touch those in the heavenlies. Therefore, it's not permitted to come near you. <laughs> Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Number three, you are redeemed to command supernatural breakthroughs. You are redeemed to command supernatural breakthroughs. That is your redemptive right. Matthew chapter 5, beginning from verse 13 to verse 16. The Bible paints it this way to us. It said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, it said, where will shall it be salted? He said, you are the light of the world. He said, no one lights a candle and puts it under a bushel, but places it on a candlestick that it may give light to all that are in the house. You are the salt, you are the light. You are the salt, you are the light. You are required to give taste, you are required to show the way. That is what God is saying. So you are ordained for supernatural breakthroughs. Shout hallelujah. You are ordained for supernatural breakthroughs. That is God's ordination for you. You must see it in order to live it. I am ordained for supernatural breakthroughs. It means that I am not permitted to suffer breakdowns. I must continue to experience breakthrough. From breakthrough to breakthrough. From lifting to lifting. From promotion to promotion. That is God's ordination for us. As the redeemed of the Lord. That is his ordination for us. As the redeemed of the Lord. And please hear this. It doesn't matter how God found you. Or what position in which he found you. The fact that you are connected to him. Has rewired your destiny. You are now ordained for breakthrough. You may have come from a family or from a lineage where no one ever reached certain heights. But now that you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. There is a new story concerning you. There is a new song concerning you. There is something new that nobody has seen before that is packaged for you. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. That is God's ordination. So anyone that is born again is ordained by God to experience supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one shall become a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. In other words, when he found him, he was a little one. When he found him, he was a small one. But though thy beginning be small, thy later end shall greatly increase. You are ordained for supernatural breakthroughs. You must carry that as your identity. Refuse to be identified with breakdowns. No matter what your previous experiences have been, now that you are in Christ, you are a new creature. 
And that means you must have a new experience. That will become your testimony in the name of Jesus. But how does this supernatural breakthrough really come to be? We are ordained for it. It is, our de it is our destiny in Christ. But how does it really come to be? How do we experience it? Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. It said, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to, ob to observe all and to do all that he co his commandments, which I command you this day, he said, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. If you hearken diligently and you observe to do the things that he is commanding, he said, then he will now set you on high above all nations of the earth. We have heard the testimony of our father shared many times how that he said that many years ago, the Lord spoke to him and said, I have a place for you on top if you are interested. He said, Lord, I'm interested. He said, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. The pathway to the top is simple. Obedience to God's commandment. Obedience to God's commandment. Abraham was a man relegated to the back. At the age of 75, no identity. It seemed as if his destiny looked like it was written off already. Most people have closed the case. Nobody is expecting any new thing to come out of a 75-year-old man. But suddenly the Lord, the Lord spoke to him. Get out of your father's house. Come out of your kindred. Go to a land that I will show you. And if you do that, I will bless you. I will make your name great. He said, you shall become a blessing. Indeed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And Abraham departed. The story of Abraham's change came on the basis of his obedience. The moment you commit to obeying God, you are positioning for a change of story. We had the testimonies that were read to us this morning of individuals that simply positioned themselves to obey God. That family said they were shattered, battered, and scattered when they came to this commission. No house to live, evicted from their home, property, lost business, gone, everything upside down. Living in, inside a one-room hotel where they were struggling to survive but began to heed the instruction. They said, we began to engage the force of praise and kingdom advancement prayers. And God turned their story around. From there into a three-bedroom house with an SUV, with a permanent job, just simply skyrocketed from where they were to where they ought to be by obedience. The truth is this. The distance between your present position and your ultimate place in destiny is separated by obedience. The moment you begin obeying God, you begin translating from one level to another. God has a better tomorrow than today, a better next week than this week, a better next month than this month. But it is the obedience of the present that secures the future. The obedience of the present is what secures the future. You must come to understand that tomorrow is being prepared for by what you do today. What you do today is what creates your place tomorrow. Where we are today is the product of what we did yesterday. So it is the engagement of today that secures the promotion of tomorrow. The lifting of the future is in the obedience of the present. That is why we must never play with divine instruction. God has told us, for example, in this season, Operation 10 for Christ 2020 is on. We are all on the field running to ensure that we obey the instruction. Because in the instruction obeyed is our change of level. The moment you commit to obedience, you begin to experience supernatural change of level. I see that becoming somebody's experience in the name of Jesus. You believe it? Say louder, amen. amen. I said, I see that becoming somebody's experience in the name of Jesus. So you are redeemed to command supernatural breakthroughs. And number four, you are redeemed a God in the likeness of man. You are redeemed a God in the likeness of man. Now, the Bible puts it this way in Psalm chapter 82, beginning from verse 5. It said, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. He said, but you die like men and fall like the princes. Somebody said, God forbid. What is God saying? He's saying to us, if any man is born again, that individual has become a child of God. Very clearly we have that in scriptures. 
we are children of God the moment we become born again. John chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible said, as many as believed him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe upon his name. So the moment a person becomes born again, that individual becomes a child of God. And according to scripture, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. A new creature. In other words, he's a different order of being than he was before. Now, what order of being is he? The Bible makes clear to us that he has become a child of God. He is born of God and therefore he has the life of God within him. Now, the truth is this. The order of life that you have determines the order of creature that you are. The order of life that you have determines the order of creature that you are. The order of life that you have determines the order of creature that you are. Before you became born again, you had the life of a man in you. That was human life. It was not connected to God. But when a man becomes born again and is in Christ, then inside of him, there is a new life that is there. No wonder the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse, verse 12, it said, he that hath the Son of God has life. What kind of life? The Bible calls it eternal life. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That everlasting life is the life of God inside of man. Now, in the natural, we have heard our father paint this picture many times and it's so vital and important. If a goat gives birth, it will give birth to a goat. If a cow gives birth, it will give birth to a cow. A horse to a horse. A monkey to a monkey. A donkey to a donkey. Even chicken, it is chicken. Duck, it is duck. Eagle, it is eagle. No matter what it is, the order of creation is that everything that produces, produces after its own kind. That is the order of creation. Now, if a man gives birth, he gives birth to a man. But when God gives birth, what will he give birth to? Give birth to God. That's why he said there, I have said you are God's. All of you are the son, children of the Most High. He said, but because you don't see it, you don't understand it. He said, that's why you die like men and fall like one of the princes. Because of a lack of understanding. In John chapter 10, look at Jesus here speaking. Verse 35 and 36. Look at what Jesus said here. He said, if he called them gods. Start from verse 34. It says there, I have said, he said, it is written unto you, I said, ye are gods. <laughs> and if he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. He said in verse 36, he says, say of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent to this world, thou blasphemy, because I said, I am the son of God. He said, it was written to you, I have said, you are gods. He said, and if God has said it, he said, the scripture cannot be broken. So we must come to realize our status. You are not an ordinary human being. Is somebody getting what God is saying? You are not an ordinary human being. You carry human frame, human body, but inside of you there is divine life. That's why the Bible puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 4. Verse 6 and verse 7, it said, God who called light to shine out of darkness has shined in our heart and to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He said, and we carry this treasure in eighteen vessels. We carry it in eighteen vessels. Don't let the container deceive you. The content is divine. The content is divine. When a man is in Christ, he may carry human container, but he carries divine content. Inside of him is the dwelling presence of the Most High. The life of God dwells inside of him. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> so the Bible says we may have 18 vessels, but we are carrying divine content. And that content is what determines our experience. 
if you can begin to see the reality of what you carry inside of you, it will change your position supernaturally. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. And that's why we must go for light. We must go for light. Look at what he said in that scripture in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 6. He said there, he said God, verse 6, he said God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts and he wants to give to us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. We must keep going for light. Who is Jesus? The word of God. The word of God is the one that shows us the potency of what we carry inside of us. No wonder we are told in 2 Peter 1 verse 4, he said there, he said, according to the promises, he said, we are giving precious promises that by these promises of the word of God, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. When you begin to see it, you ask yourself, if truly I am a God, what should be my experience on the earth? God said to Moses in Exodus 7 and verse 1, he says, see, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Look at that. I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. When, you, when Moses saw it, he began to harass Pharaoh. Think about it. You are a man who was a fugitive, who ran away from the king. And then suddenly you have come back to the nation. The king is sitting on the throne. And God is sending you with certain dangerous messages to the king. To tell him, look, if you don't listen, I will punish you. The king has soldiers. And here comes this man, Moses, and his senior brother Aaron. Two of them, old men, between 75 and 80, the two of them. Walking together, going to the king's palace to harass the king. And the king does not have the capacity to arrest them. They walk in with command and authority and walk out with command and authority. The king can do nothing. Inside his own country, inside his own palace. You know what that meant? He has seen himself as a god over Pharaoh. The punishment became so much that Pharaoh said, as you are going, go as you have said. Take your wives and your families as you have said. Take your goods as you have said. And when you are going, please pray for me. The king became submissive because somebody has seen his true picture. If you can see that you are a God, you will not be harassed by the enemy. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. That's why the question we must ask ourselves, what do you see concerning yourself? What do you see? If you can see who you are in Christ, it changes your position. Acts 14, the Bible tells us, verse 11, it said, they began to say, the gods have come to us in the likeness of man. The divine content inside of them was finding expression. They were manifesting as sons of God upon the earth because they saw who they were in Christ. My prayer for each one of us is that our eyes will be open to see who we are in Christ. That that divine content inside of us we begin to find practical expression in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to think about this because it will help you in understanding. If you take, two, if they put two bottles side by side, they carry inside of them clear content, exact same bottle. And then you are about to carry one of the bottles. And somebody says, please carry this bottle for me from this point to that place. Just drop it on that table. And you say, okay, you are rushing to carry the bottle. And as soon as you take the bottle, it tells you that bottle you are carrying carries acid. Suddenly you discover that the way you are carrying the bottle is different. You become careful because you recognize what is inside the bottle. Before you may have thought it was water, so you may have been careless. But the moment they told you it is acid, you become careful. The content consciousness determines your behavior. If you know who you are, it will affect how you carry yourself. Is somebody getting what God is saying? You must be content conscious. Inside me, I carry God. The life of God is inside me. My words I speak are not careless words. When I speak, something must happen. Why? Because of he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Is somebody getting what God is saying? 
Be content conscious. Be content what? Be content conscious. Don't go around saying, you see, John, what can I do as a normal human being? You are not a normal human being. Paul told the church in, Cor in Corinth, he said, all of you are kind of why? He said, because you are behaving like mere men. You are acting like normal people. You are not an ordinary person. You are ordained with divine life inside of you. And that life will find expression from now. Amen. If you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said, if you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, today is our covenant day of open doors. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 3, verse 7 and verse 8, it said, I'm he that have the key of David, and he opens and no man shuts, and he shuts and no man opens. He said, and behold, I set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. Today, the door of life will be opened unto you. Amen. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said, the door of life will be opened unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's important for us to recognize that the anointing, according to scripture, destroys yokes. Uh, Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, it says, In that day, the burden shall be lifted up from your shoulders, and the yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It means whatever is restricting your access to the open door will be destroyed by the anointing. <laughs> Every yoke, no matter what it is and how long it may have been, that may have stood upon your life, today the yoke shall be destroyed. <laughs> the yoke of sickness, of disease, of spells, of enchantment, generational causes, those yokes shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now Luke chapter 4 verse 18, we find this experience with Jesus. He opened the book and saw what it was written. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those that are bruised. Look at that. By the anointing, he said, suddenly that anointing brings the solution to all of these conditions. It breaks the back of poverty. It breaks the back of sickness. It destroys the hold of the enemy and brings you into total liberty. Today, the anointing will establish your liberty. Whatever represents any oppression of the devil, the anointing of the Holy Ghost today will destroy it. In 2 Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 7, the Bible says there that the destruction of Amaziah was of God. He said, in going after Jeroboam, he said, for he came after Jehu, whom the Lord has anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. The anointing, cutting off the foothold of wickedness. Whatever represents any hold of wickedness in any department of your life, the anointing will be breaking it in the name of Jesus. So by the anointing, expect the breaking of yokes. Expect what? The breaking of yokes. Whatever the yokes may have been, and no matter how long standing, those yokes will be broken today. <laughs> Number two, the anointing brings ordinary people to the limelight. It brings ordinary people to the limelight. We look at the example of David in scriptures. The Bible shows us in 1 Samuel 16, how that Samuel came to the house of David's father, Jesse, and asked him, bring all your sons, because God has chosen one of them to be king. And Jesse brought all of his sons, except for David. And they paraded all before Samuel, and none of them was found to be king. And then here comes Samuel, say, is there no other son? God hasn't chosen any of this one. Is there no other one at all? He said, there is one, but he's inside the bush. He goes after the sheep. Samuel said, we'll not sit down until he comes. And as soon as David came, oil was poured upon David. And the Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. Suddenly, David catapulted to the limelight. He became news in the palace. They said in verse 18, I have seen a son of Jesse. He's a mighty man of valor. The one who could not be seen at home was being spoken about in the palace. As soon as the anointing came, 
he went from being relegated to being relevant. That will be somebody's experience today. He was shot into the limelight. By verse 22, we find Saul saying, he said, I pray thee, let David stand before me because he has found favor in my sight. By reason of that anointing, favor came upon him and he became a palace dweller on the basis of the anointing. I see that becoming somebody's experience in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so the anointing pushes us into the limelight. We saw it in the case of David. Before you knew it, David became a national hero. He became a man to be wondered at on the basis of the anointing. On the basis of the anointing today, I see somebody here becoming a man or a woman to be wondered at. Yeah. You believe it? Say a louder amen. Yeah. How about the apostles? We have the experience of the apostles in scriptures. Acts of the 4 verse 13. We are told there concerning the apostles. He said, when they saw them and they saw the boldness and the, you know, of Peter and of John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. These were men that were with Jesus for three and a half years. But it was when the Spirit came upon them suddenly that their identity with Christ began to find expression. They were ignorant men. They were unlearned men. That is, they were illiterate. But the illiteracy could not hinder them from moving to the place of the limelight. Before you knew it, the entire Jerusalem was under siege. These men had taken the nation by storm on the basis of the anointing. I see that same kind of anointing speaking upon each one of our lives today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and number three, the anointing opens impossible doors. Impossible doors. Doors that cannot be imagined opened. The anointing opens it. Two case studies. We have the case study of Cyrus. In the book of Isaiah chapter 45, beginning from verse 1 to 3, we are told that concerning Cyrus, he said, Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding, to subdue nations before him. I will loose the loins of kings, to open to him the two-leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. What will I do? He said, I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. That will happen for somebody here today. Whatever was to be a gate hindering your, your progress and your advancement, God will break it in pieces. He said, and I will cut asunder the bars of iron. I will cut asunder the bars of iron. I will break down whatever should be hindering your advancement. That's what God says. And it happened by the anointing. He said, this is to Cyrus, the one that is anointed. He said, the door and the gate shall be broken down. He said, the bar shall be cut off. That will be somebody's experience here. <laughs> Whatever represents any bar that is holding anyone from advancing today by the anointing, it shall be broken in pieces. <laughs> you believe it, say louder, amen. <laughs> I say, you believe it, say louder, amen. <laughs> we have the second case study, the example of the apostles the bible shows us these men were in hiding in Acts chapter 1 from verse 14 to the end they were in hiding in the upper room limited seemed to be shut down looked as if their case was closed but then the holy ghost came down the anointing of the highest came upon them and suddenly in chapter 2 they jumped out and went into relevance suddenly you find this man taking the entire city to the point that we are told that they brought people from everywhere the north the south the east the west just so that peter's shadow can fall upon one of them. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 down to verse 16. By reason of the anointing. In fact, look at what the Bible says concerning this man. It tells us there that of the rest, doth no man join themselves unto them. It said because the people magnified them. They were not in the same level again. The anointing pushed them to another dimension. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> that would be somebody's experience here. Yeah. I said that would be somebody's experience here. Somebody said to God's servant a number of years ago, he said to him, he said, we have stopped competing with you. He said, what we are simply seeing is your back. He said, and at the rate at which we are going, we are even concerned that we may not even be able to see your back again. 
when the anointing comes, it catapults you. It pushes you. It advances you. It breaks the things limiting you and moves you to a new dimension. I see that becoming somebody's experience here in the name of Jesus. They looked at the apostle and said, the rest did not join themselves. The people magnified them. They saw them as different. It was clear. The anointing has ushered them to a higher level. I see that becoming somebody's experience here. Every impossible door will open on your behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what department of life it may be, it will open on your behalf. Lift your hand to heaven right now and give thanks to God for his word you have received this morning. Appreciate him and give him the praise. Give him glory and adoration. Celebrate him our God is faithful. Thank you, Father, for your word. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Before we go any further this morning, it's important to note, all that we have said only applies if you are in Christ. All that we have said only applies if you are in Christ. If you are in Christ, you enjoy the fullness of these blessings. But outside of Christ, only crisis remain. Wherever you are this morning, you are not yet born again. I'm not talking about whether you have been in church, whether you attend services, but whether you are in Christ, whether you have Christ living in you, whether that life of God is inside of you. Wherever you are right now, if you are not yet born again, you don't have the evidence of salvation in your life and you want to be born again, you want to become a child of God, quickly, rise your feet right now. I want to pray with you. All over this place, wherever you are, quickly rise your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let nothing hold you back. This is your time and this is your opportunity. The life of God is going to find its way into you if you take a decision right now. Also, there are those who are here who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Something has gone wrong somewhere. You have missed it. And because you have missed it, you can sense inside of you there is no evidence of divine life anymore. You want to return to God so that you can be restored by him. You want a return of that life of God inside of you. You want to have a new beginning with Jesus. Quickly, rise your feet right now also. I want to pray with you. Quickly, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? On your feet everywhere. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Very quickly, make sure you are on your feet. God bless you. If you have done that, responding to the first or the second call, make your way to the hour closest to you right now and we are going to pray. Make your way to the hour closest to you as we get set to pray. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as they move right now. Thank you, Jesus. Quickly make your way to the aisle. Officials, assist them, beckon upon them. Make your way to the aisle as we get set to pray. Now, suspend filling your form for a moment and lift up your right hand. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, louder, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you no turning back. I will serve you. No turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these precious ones. You have drawn them today unto yourself. Let your grace uphold each one of them. We declare that none of these will turn back from following you. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a new day for you. Please complete the forms that have been given to you. Submit it to the official closest to you. And then take note, as was earlier announced, we have our foundation classes that take place every Monday. You attend just two Mondays, tomorrow Monday and the upper Monday. And you have a firm foundation for a glorious work with the Lord. Don't miss it for anything. The office will contact you and let you know the place that is closest to you take advantage of it and you shall be blessed shall we all rise on our feet everybody and give jesus a big hand of praise as we